6. We do continue to follow the breaking news of an FBI raid on Capitol Hill. We're learning more about what may be behind the newly revealed public corruption probe. News Channel 5 Chief Investigative Reporter Phil Williams was there this morning as agents searched the home of former House Speaker Glenn Cassida. It was the beginning of a series of morning raids. And Phil, what are you learning? Well, guys, the FBI has long had an interest in much of what we've revealed about Glenn Cassida, including allegations of an alleged bribe offer for a vote on school vouchers. But sources are suggesting to me that these raids may be more focused on an illicit scheme to launder campaign money. This was the scene on Capitol Hill as a small army of FBI agents hauled off evidence following a raid of legislative offices. At the center of the public corruption investigation, former House Speaker Glenn Cassida. Mr. Speaker, can we talk to you about... I'm late for a meeting. A scandal first exposed by News Channel 5 Investigates forced Cassida to resign his leadership position in August 2019. Despite that, the Franklin Republican was re-elected to his House seat. But at 7 a.m. Friday, Cassida was a man in a bathrobe as FBI agents knocked on his door to execute a federal search warrant. As a search team arrived about an hour later, documenting the scene as evidence, the former House Speaker could be seen inside chatting with agents. Those agents eventually emerged with two new boxes filled with evidence. In East Nashville, the FBI surprised former Cassida aide Holt Witt, who we spotted handing his smartphone over to an agent. Our cameras also spotted FBI agents hauling off boxes from a downtown apartment. That apartment belongs to former Cassida aide Kate Cuthred. Inside the legislative office building, Cassida's office was also the center of much attention. But the FBI also searched the offices of three other Republican state representatives. In one case, building maintenance was summoned to bring a drill that was apparently used to open a locked drawer. Agents searched the offices and homes of Representatives Robin Smith and Todd Warner, and apparently just the office of Kent Kelfi. We discovered all three had used a shadowy mailing company out of New Mexico during last year's legislative races. And I would certainly like to get to the bottom of this, because anyone that's you know, funding a, an attack ad or attack campaign on an opponent without uh, showing who they are, uh, it, it's just, uh, it reeks of political corruption. Last summer, News Channel 5 Investigates revealed how Marshall County Republican Rick Tillis had been the subject of attack ads from a fictitious group, apparently to hide the source of the money. At the time, Cassida and his allies were rumored to be the source of the apparently illegal operation. So who's behind it? You know, I, I really can't say. Uh, I think I know who might be behind it. But at this point, I can't really make any accusations. We're we discovered one of the attack mailers was sent using Chattanooga Postal Permit Number 383. That exact same permit number appeared on a mailer from Tillis' opponent, Todd Warner. As FBI agents left Cassidy's home, they refused to comment. And the former House Speaker showed no interest in opening his door for a second time. And tonight we are hearing from Representative Kent Calfee, who tells News Channel 5's Jennifer Krause that he believes he is, quote, an innocent bystander in these raids. Holt Witt's attorney sent us a statement saying the former Cassida aide is, quote, fully cooperating with the investigation. Meanwhile, a law enforcement source tells us there is a lot more to come with this investigation. Now, the search and seizure of evidence happened in the view of state lawmakers and staff at the Cordell Holt building. News Channel 5's Kyle Horan continues our team coverage live. And Kyle, how are lawmakers reacting? Well, Phil, the people that work side by side with Representative Glenn Cassida tell me they saw a lot of the investigation happening today. In fact, I spoke today with the Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton. He tells me when he first became Speaker, federal officials approached him and told him there was an ongoing investigation. Since becoming Speaker, uh, I was contacted by federal authorities regarding an ongoing inve investigation related to the former Speaker's office. Visibly shaken, House Speaker Cameron Sexton addressed the media about an investigation he inherited upon assuming leadership in 2020. He spoke personally first about how this FBI investigation impacts everyone in the Capitol. This has been a trying week for our country, and this will be a difficult time for our state as well as we go down this road. Personally, 
These are our friends and colleagues uh, of ours that we worked with for many years. It's important to remember that this is just the start of the investigation and the process and not the end. Today does not necessarily imply guilt. Speaker Sexton acknowledged this investigation is focused on other Republican representatives. Capitol staff confirmed that a number of GOP staffers were put on paid administrative leave this week, including the interim chief staff for the House Holt Witt and the legislative assistants for both Glenn Cassida and Kent Caffey. Despite this, Sexton says he doesn't believe Representative Caffey is directly under investigation by the FBI. Across the aisle, Democrat Representative Vincent Dixie says this isn't how he'd hoped to start the year. He says Tennesseans deserve so much better than this. Our country, state, is in turmoil. We're facing some issues that we've never seen, especially in my lifetime. And it's beyond politics right now. We're, people are in survival mode. We just want to make sure that we cover the most basic needs for people. And we can never forget that's the reason why we're here is to make sure that we take care of the business of the people. Speaker Sexton emphasized today that anyone who was under investigation today doesn't necessarily mean that they're guilty of a crime. However, he says if any member is approached by somebody from the FBI, they should cooperate fully. Reporting live outside the Cordell Hall building, Kyle Haran, News Channel 5.